G'day folks, it's Atto here from Atto's Kitchen, or Atto's Corner, getting up to my mischief. Anyway, get the apron on. So what I'm doing this morning is going to be some Ghanaian egg stew. I'm going to cook up a bit of a feast for, for the week, some nice Sunday breakfast. I've got maybe some, I've got some fresh jasmine rice. I've also got some nice crusty sourdough bread. So, you know, we've got options. Maybe even a bit of a yam, a bit of leftover yam, although I've got to chop that open and see whether it's any good. So let's get into this. Let's run through what I have here of my ingredients. Let's see how it stands up as a Ghanaian tomato egg stew. Good morning folks and welcome to Atto's Corner or Atto's Kitchen. Still working on that and trying to decide what I want to call it or move towards in the way showers walkabout. Whether we just turn into Atto's Kitchen walkabout is probably closer to reality. And what I've got for you this morning is some Ghanaian egg stew. As I was doing my homework and preparing, I was realizing that uh, this is very similar to something else that I've already made before. So I've got something here to talk about afterwards, a little secret ingredient from another culture. So, and then we'll see all the similarities that exist there. Let's start by getting into this and I'll run through the ingredients and then chop it up. Apparently this is a pretty standard meal in most Ghanaian households. You know, we've got the basic ingredients. We've got our onion, our tomato, and eggs. Oh, and of course, you never forget our favorite little hot pepper there. Also got some garlic, ginger cube, got some basil here. And to sort of flavor it up a bit, we've got some smoked paprika. And let's sort of balance the heat of that with a bit of sweetness from these red peppers. I've got two red peppers here. And as I was saying, as I was getting this ready, I realized Hang on a second. These have all the hallmarks of another dish from another culture. And it turns out these are all the ingredients from the North African or Middle Eastern. Depends, everybody wants to claim it for themselves. And that's shakshuka. So the Israelis want to claim it as their own. But the origins of shakshuka are believed to have come from Tunisia. So, or it's argued that even Yemen as well. But I'm kind of betting on Tunisia, North Africa, all these flavors. So what is typically used in shakshuka is harissa paste and comes from the Arabic word, I believe, harasa. That basically means mix up or, and it was often to begin with believed to have been mixed up or pounded until till it was ready while he waited in the market. So maybe in the, the souks of North Africa or the markets that they would get that ready. Of course, maybe then the Persians have started adding rose petals to it. So that's where the rose harissa comes from. Shakshuka is delicious eaten with some crusty bread and you can either be eaten, I guess, with Lebanese bread or some nice Turkish bread, but I've got some nice sourdough that I picked up yesterday over in another town. So I'm going to dig in with that and that's typically what I'd eat with harissa or with shakshuka. So this is going to be my first time. Oh, and just a side note, yep, shakshuka usually would have eggs dropped into it and then sort of finished off in the oven maybe or just under a broiler and cooked away in that tomato stew base, that delicious flavored stew base. What else? What else but a surprise when you've got an Aussie cooking Ghanaian foods with all kinds of ingredients from around the world. What else would it be but a mix up mix up from this Aussie who loves to cook Ghanaian food. Let's get into it and start chopping and let's get cooking. Okay let's get this started with some coconut oil. Get the pan warming up on the stove and then we're going to get these onions and peppers in there and get them started. Okay just trying to decide how much oil. That looks like a good dollop. <laughs> One of my favorite words. And yes, I'll be doing my best to keep my language clean. And apologies if it's been been a bit fruity before now. Making changes, making improvements as we go. Okay, so we're going to go in with the onion and the red pepper or the sweet pepper. Just get that, not browning, but just stewing down, sweetening a bit, softening up and get that started in there. Get all of that goodness in the pot. And look at that fine chopped onion. All right, I might have cheated with a mandolin. Made quick work of uh, the onion and the tomato, or the onion and the tomato. The pepper, I chopped this myself. Anyway, let's get that cooking down a bit. Thinking that we'll sweat that down and I'll just put the lid on, keep a bit of that moisture in, that flavor and 
come back to that maybe in about five or ten minutes. Okay, so this should be softened up by now. It's been about, oh, let's say five or ten minutes. Let's have a look. It's smelling delicious already. And there's just two ingredients in coconut oil. Look at this, this goodness. Okay, I'm going to get the garlic and the uh, ginger and hot pepper in there. I'm going to step it up a notch a bit. Let's see what this hot pepper does to me, if anything. I'm sure it's got heat and teeth to it. Let's hope I don't have cough through this video. Ooh, look at that beautiful red colour. Looks delicious. It's going to taste even better too. Just going to set that there for a little bit. Let that cook through for a couple of minutes. Get that, those flavours developing. I might drop the lid back on. Give it a little bit before we go and add the tomatoes to it. I'm actually thinking that... Uh, it's not a bad thing if we dry it out a bit, get all that mixed in because by the time we add that tomato in there there's going to be a lot of liquid in that that we need to cook down. I'm going to get the paprika and the basil in there and we'll get that starting to, to build up. Toast the paprika a little bit more. I don't have any mamoni or any smoked cured fish. You know what I was thinking? Actually, I might add some bonito flakes. I've got these Japanese bonito flakes I'm going to add in. That might give it a bit of that fish flavour. The Japanese bonito flakes, their fish is just dried out and then they shave it. I'm not sure if it's salted or just completely smoked and dried, but we'll add that in later. Wow, that just came alive. This flavour is going to be awesome. Okay, starting to dry out a bit and that's not a bad thing because then I'm about to add the tomato and then we'll cook that down. And in that, while I wait for that to cook down a bit and really develop its flavour, I'll get my eggs ready. Ooh, that's looking good. So this is looking delicious. Starting to dry out a little bit more. We're going to get those tomatoes in there. Just before I pop this lid off, it's been sort of stewing down. I've checked the seasoning, it tastes delicious. The hot pepper and those seeds are there, so that's kicking in nicely. I've just got to fry this off a little bit more and then we're going to add the eggs. Oops, starting to stick a little bit on the bottom. I even put a little bit extra coconut oil in there. We need to sort of, the moisture is starting to come off this. I'm getting ready just to put the eggs in. I'm going to turn it down a little because I think this will get away. This cast iron pot will keep its heat. And I don't want to be, I don't want this stuck to the bottom. You can sort of still see bits of, bits of sort of fibre. I think that's more, maybe it is the tomato and onion and sweet pepper. But I need to fry this a little bit more. Then we're going to get our eggs in there. Let me grab the eggs. When I drop the eggs in there, I'm going to pop the lid back on and let that cook through. But it is starting to catch. Like I said, it tastes delicious. By the time I combine this with some nice olive and herb sourdough bread, because I don't have any tasty sweet Ghana bread, the sweetness of Ghana bread would balance the heat in this perfectly. I'll wait for it to fry up a little bit more. We're just going to wait for that to happen. It's starting to dry out quite nicely. Oh, and it's nearly there. The oil starting to come up on the top. Ah, oh, man, I can't wait to get into this. I'm going to start to just put some little wells in there. See if I can drop the egg. It's all disappearing. Maybe I'll just have to drop it all on top and then make the wells and let them drop through. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck on the bottom. But there should be enough coconut oil in there. That's looking good. Let's get these eggs in there. Okay, we're going to drop that lid on it for a second. Now normally with shakshuka, we'd probably be doing it in a cast iron pan and then I'd throw it in the oven once I had just cracked eggs straight in on top of it. Um, give this a couple of minutes, turn it over a bit. Maybe I might get a different spatula or paddle to turn them over. We'll see how that goes. I'll take this lid off in just a second. So let's see how this is looking. Let's give it a turn. Oh, look at those eggs. Let's mix it. Oh, not mix it, turn it. I don't want to scramble those eggs too much. They're really starting to dry out now. 
getting a little bit stuck to the bottom. I might just turn this heat off and let that finish a bit. Good to me. And that looks done. So for this first time go around, it's not too bad. I think my tomatoes needed to be riper, more red and dark. Tell you what, I guess what I needed was Ghanaian tomatoes because that would have made a huge difference. Huge difference in flavour and colour. Would have been good to pick some up in the market. I'm just going to have to wait till I can get back to that. Buy a, uh, a tin, a uh, Tommy's tomato paste tin full of fresh tomatoes in the market with some onions and go home and chop them up. Anyway, this is my first go around. Like I said, I've made this, made shakshuka before. And there goes the toast. It's going to be time to dish up. Can't wait to make this in Ghana and see how the flavour changes. I'm sure it's going to be big time. And next time I'm going to be making it with palm oil. Yeah, we're going to get some palm oil flavour into it. That's going to make it a whole lot better. All right, let's dish up. Check out this beautiful olive and herb. It's not quite what goes, but that's what I've got on hand at the moment. Look at those eggs cooked there. Well, you're all invited. I'm gonna go and sit down to this tomato egg stew with this crunchy bread. Delicious sourdough bread. Wishing it was Ghanaian tomatoes, Ghanaian sweet bread, and be having this for breakfast. So, it's about midday here, so I'm about to sit down and have some lunch now. And then hopefully I might be able to edit this and get it out. And, or maybe it'll be next weekend's video. We'll see what happens. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Watching me make my first attempt at Ghanaian tomato egg stew. Um, one other, maybe one other stray ingredient is I've got this Japanese bonito flakes. So I didn't have any fish to go in this. When you add bonito flakes, which have a, like a, are similar to a mackerel fish, when you add them to things that are hot, you, this is, this is not really Ghanaian, but I'm just more, more doing it for effect. But effect and a little bit of flavor. And yeah, maybe it's not hot enough. Sometimes you can see them. Oh yeah, that's real fishy. Sometimes you can see them move about. Oh yeah, they're starting to move with that heat. Anyway, without my mamoni, at least that gives it a bit of that umami flavor. You're all invited. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. Thanks to anyone who's been sharing on WhatsApp. I've noticed that it's really gone around to places. So thanks very much. Okay. Like I say, let's eat. Let's break into this. Let's get into some of that. Ooh. All right, the olives may not go, but let's get into some of this. Mm-hmm. Everything's toned down that hot pepper, although it's still coming through. Maybe we'll skip the bonito flakes. Didn't really need it. Could be just a vegetarian one, but oh, that tomato stew. Maybe I'll blend it up next time. I thought it might be nicer. Big chunks in there are still the red peppers. I'm off to enjoy lunch. Thanks very much for watching and for watching Atto's Corner or thanks for watching Atto's Kitchen. Let me know what you think of any different names. Atto's Corner, Atto's Kitchen, Atto's Mix Up, Mix Up. I'm not quite sure. This is delicious. I'm off to enjoy. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I can add this to my Sukuma Wiki. <coughs> <coughs> and the hot pepper hits. It wouldn't be an Atto video without that hot pepper smacking me in the back of the throat. Medazipa. <laughs> Good night.